Welcome back to this next video in which we are discussing polynomial rings in several variables. Okay, so what we are currently discussing is polynomial rings in two variables, and we've seen that the actual formal definition of a polynomial ring in two variables is that it's a polynomial ring in a single variable, the variable y, where the coefficient ring that you use is the ring of polynomials in the other indeterminate x over the ring capital R. Okay, and the great advantage of this, something that potentially I didn't stress enough in the previous video, is that you instantly know that's going going to be a ring, because it is just a polynomial ring in a single variable with a coefficient ring. Okay, yes, the coefficient ring is now uh, a, a ring of polynomials, but that doesn't matter. All we needed was the coefficient ring to be a ring, which the ring of polynomials is. So we instantly know this thing is going to be a ring. Now, one of the very early things that we did then is we changed the symbols. Rather than viewing them as actual uh, polynomials in the indeterminate y, where the coefficients are polynomials in x, we imagined multiplying out the brackets in the intuitive way, so that now what we get is a great big sum of terms uh, which consist of a monomial which is now a power of x uh, with a power of y, and then the coefficient is just from the ring capital R, okay? And that's a very intuitive change of symbols to actually uh, undergo. And then what we did is we tried to understand how addition works, okay, in the ring of polynomials in two variables. Now we know that addition is going to obey the axioms that it needs to obey for a ring, okay, because we know that this thing is going to be a ring, as I've just stated. So our job really, what we were really trying to do is understand how addition was going to work when we've changed the symbols. Okay, so we know how addition must work in here because that's already defined. We were just trying to translate that into a rule that we could apply to our now changed symbols, and we found a very nice rule. Okay, so if you've got the polynomials in their changed symbols form, all you have to do is add the coefficients that are in front of corresponding monomials together, okay, and you add them together in the initial ring, capital R. Okay, so what we're now going to turn our attention to is multiplication. Now before we actually turn our attention to multiplication, let's discuss the fact that the instant you've defined addition and you understand addition in this ring of polynomials in two indeterminates, you can now think about decomposing your polynomial into a monomial decomposition, into a sum of monomials, and this is another reason why this change of symbols is incredibly natural. Okay, so if you have some polynomial, okay, of this form here, what you can do once you understand addition is you can split it down into monomials, where you just have a coefficient in front of a power of x, in front of a power of y. Okay, those are all polynomials in here, even in the most formal sense here, they are still polynomials. Okay, they're polynomials where only, okay, so let me just write something down here. So let's say we've got one here, a, x to the, let's say, some j, and y to some i. This is a monomial, okay, with a coefficient in front of it. This is a polynomial in here. It's just where all of the coefficients in front of all the other powers of y are zero, and the poly coefficient in front of y to the power of i, this specific one, is just a monomial in the ring of polynomials in the indeterminate x over the ring capital R. Okay, so this is a polynomial in here. And now that we've got addition, and we understand addition in here, we can think about writing every polynomial just as a sum of these, okay, because we understand how addition works, that all you do is you add the coefficients in front of the powers of y, the corresponding powers of y, and then to add those coefficients, you just add the uh, polynomials in the indeterminate x over the ring capital R in the way that we understand. Okay, so you can split it down into its monomial decomposition, and that looks exactly like what we've got here. Now, let me stress that when we did this before, before we'd understood addition, we were actually thinking about changing the symbol. Okay, so these additions weren't actually interpreted as additions within the ring of polynomials. This was just initially a change of symbols. Okay, but now, if you like, you can actually think about these pluses as being pluses within the ring of polynomials in the two indeterminates over the coefficient ring, capital R. Okay, you can think about this representing the monomial decomposition of any polynomial. 
Okay, and this is going to be incredibly helpful for us in understanding multiplication in this ring of polynomials in two indeterminates. Okay, uh, because now we can just take the two polynomials that we want to multiply together, we can decompose them into their monomial decompositions, and then if we want to multiply those together, well, the multiplication has to distribute over addition. This is addition in the ring of polynomials in two indeterminates. We've established that now, okay? If we want multiplication to be a ring, and indeed it has to be a ring because we know this structure is a ring, it must obey distributivity. Okay, so it's just going to become the multiplication of monomials and then summing them all back together, summing all the multiplications of monomials back together. So all we need to understand is how does you multiply two monomials together. So let's just take a little bit of time to think about how two monomials will multiply together. Okay, so if we have a monomial here, and let's have a x to the alpha 1, y to the, what should I go for, alpha 2, and then we'll have bx to the beta 1, y uh, to the power of beta 2 here. So here are two monomials, and I'm now multiplying them together as I would in the ring of polynomials in the two indeterminates x and y over the ring capital R. So let me just try and colour code this in again. So originally I colour coded that in, in orange. So I'll stick with that. So this multiplication here is now in the ring of polynomials in the two indeterminates x and y over the coefficient ring capital R. Okay, so a and b here are just elements of capital R. Now, just following the definition, remember that this is the defined to be the ring of polynomials in the indeterminate y, where the coefficients are from the ring of polynomials in the indeterminate x. Okay, so what we initially do is we view these as the coefficients in front of these powers of y. Now, how is multiplication defined in the ring of polynomials in the indeterminate y? Well, of course, you multiply the two coefficients together in the um, coefficient ring, which in this case is the ring of polynomials in the indeterminate x. Now, what did I previously color code that in? Vivid purple there, so I'll stick with that. So we'll have all operations in that still color coded in vivid purple. So, and then we add the powers of y. So this, just by definition, uh, will be ax alpha 1 times bx beta 1, okay, where this multiplication is now multiplication in the coefficient ring for the uh, ring of polynomials in the indeterminate x. So it's multiplication in the ring of polynomials in the indeterminate x, okay. Um, Sorry, the, it's just multiplication in the coefficient ring for the ring of polynomials in the indeterminate y, okay? So it's the multiplication in the ring of polynomials in the indeterminate x. And then we just add the powers of y, so we have y to the power of alpha 2 plus beta 2 here. So that's just by the definition, okay, of multiplication in a ring of polynomials in a single indeterminate. Now what we have to do is multiply these two polynomials together, and we know how that works. We multiply the two coefficients of these together, and then add the powers. So this will become a times b, where they're now multiplied together finally in the ring capital R. Now what did we denote the ring capital R in? That was in red. So I'll denote that multiplication here in red, and then I'll just bring this back into view. Uh, and then that will all be in front of x to the power of alpha 1 plus beta 1, and then that will be in front of y to the power of alpha 2 plus beta 2. So this is the monomial you'll end up with when you multiply two monomials together. Okay, now this allows us to understand multiplication of any two polynomials in the ring of polynomials in the indeterminate x and y. Okay, so if we have two polynomials, we now understand that they can be written in their monomial decomposition, like so, the sum over i, the sum over j, okay, and here's one a i j x to the i, y to the j. Okay, now we view this sum here not as just an abstract sum as we did before, we now view it as the actual sum in the ring of polynomials in the indeterminate x and y. Okay, it's the monomial decomposition of this polynomial now. Okay, and now what we want to do is we want to multiply that polynomial in the ring of polynomials in the indeterminate x and y, um, okay, with this other polynomial, which I'll call, again, we'll have decomposed this into its monomial decomposition, and also I should come up with some different indexes, k and l that's come up with, rather than i and j again. So the sum over k, the sum over l of b, k, l, x to the k, 
y to the l. And again, we view this great big sum here as a monomial decomposition. So it's the sum of all the monomials, which if you actually did sum those up would make the polynomial. Okay, so for any polynomial, you can indeed come up with its monomial decomposition in this way. And now because multiplication must distribute over addition, because we know this ring of polynomials in the two indeterminates x and y over the ring capital R is a ring, okay, uh, it must be the case that multiplication distributes over addition. So we can just multiply all of the monomials together and then sum them back together with the addition law that we have now understand on the ring of polynomials. So this will actually just become the sum over i, the sum over j, the sum over k, the sum over l of a i j multiplied with b k l. And now I'm just using the definition, well, what we've explored uh, for how m monomials multiply together. So these two are being multiplied together in the coefficient ring, capital R. And then the powers of x just add, so we'll just take x to the i plus k, and then we'll have y to the j plus l. Okay, so here we've just multiplied our monomials together and then we're just summing up all of the products of monomials, which themselves are monomials. And then you'll get your answer. If you actually performed this great big addition in the ring of polynomials in the two indeterminates, you'd actually then get your answer. Okay, right, so that is how multiplication works in this ring of polynomials in two indeterminates. Okay, right, so we've now studied rings of polynomials in two indeterminates. What I now want to make a comment on is that this generalizes, okay? Um, it generalizes to a higher number of indeterminates. So what we can now do is imagine taking the ring of polynomials in three indeterminates, x, y, and z. And the way, of course, that we define that is we just define it as the ring of polynomials in two indeterminates, which we now understand. Um, and then adjoin the third one. So we take the ring of polynomials over z in the indeterminate z, z, where the coefficients are now in the ring of polynomials in the indeterminate x and y. Okay, and all of the arguments that I have just said will apply for this as well. So addition, well, firstly you can firstly imagine multiplying out the brackets. So initially you'd view this as a polynomial in Z where the coefficients were polynomials in the ring of polynomials in two indeterminates. But again you can say, okay, let's change the symbols. Let's go over to writing out our polynomials uh, by multiplying out the brackets or imagining that we can multiply out the brackets. Okay, so you do that very quickly. Uh, and then what you do is understand addition, and you find that addition 2 works beautifully component-wise. Okay, so you'll just add um, coefficients that are in front of the same monomials, which in this case will be the same power of x, the same power of y, and the same power of z. Okay, and then you can understand uh, multiplication by imagining that you can decompose every polynomial into its monomial decomposition, which will look exactly ha like uh, what you've relabeled up all the polynomials as. Okay, but now the sum, instead of just being a symbolic sum, will be an actual sum in the ring of polynomials in these three indeterminates. And then uh, you can define multiplication because you know how a monomial multiplication must have worked. And this then goes on, you can go inductively in this way. So you can then add on a fourth um, indeterminate to get a ring of polynomials in four indeterminates, five indeterminates, six indeterminates, and they're all defined from the previous one. Okay, so the polynomials in several variables are defined uh, inductively by the definition of the one before it. Okay, so you can then end up finally with a ring of polynomials in an arbitrary number of indeterminates, a finite number of indeterminates, but still an arbitrary number. So x1, x2, all the way up to xn now. And of course the elements of this uh, ring of polynomials in the indeterminates x1, x2, all the way up to xn will just be these uh, sums of these sums of terms where the monomials look like this. They have a power of x1, so it'll be x1 to the power of alpha 1, x2 to the power of alpha 2, all the way up to xn to the power of alpha n, and they'll have a coefficient in front of them from the ring capital R, okay, and only a finite number of the terms will be non-zero, they'll have a non-zero coefficient.
Okay, so that's what the elements of this are truly going to look like. You'll very quickly change the symbols, as I say, to this. You can imagine that this is the monomial decomposition, and we now understand how addition and multiplication will work. Addition will work just component-wise, adding uh, the coefficients that are in front of the same monomials, which have to match now in the power of x1, the power of x2, and the power of xn. And multiplication will work just by dividing your polynomial down into the um, monomial decomposition and then applying distributivity, okay, and then just multiplying the monomials in the natural way by multiplying the two coefficients together and then adding the powers of x1, the powers of x2, all the way up to the powers of xn. Okay, so uh, I'm not going to go through the construction of this arbitrary one because it is quite cumbersome, uh, but it's done inductively. We've seen now and understood how you go from the ring of polynomials in a single indeterminate to the ring of polynomials in two indeterminates, and it's the same step from the ring of polynomials in two indeterminates to the ring of polynomials in three indeterminates, or arbitrarily from the ring of polynomials in i minus one indeterminates to the ring of polynomials in i indeterminates. It's done inductively. Okay, so we'll call it there for this video.